What we're going to talk about tonight is in this red blood cell, we have a crop of them in our system right now, and they range from red blood cells that are a few hours old to over three months old. But if we peel back the uh, skin on your red blood cell, the, the, the biphospholipid layer, you would find that inside that red blood cell is a layer of fat. And that layer of fat that is the lining that kind of outlines and keeps the shape of this red blood cell is made up of the fats that are in your system. By looking at the red blood cells that are in your circulation right now, we can take a very good snapshot of how well your system is processing fats and what fats are doing once they get in your system, uh, whether or not they're becoming the fats we don't want, like trans fats, uh, whether or not you're having an excessive amount of saturated fat that is, I think, very educational, and let's get to it. I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> All right, so this is a red blood cell, and if you look very carefully, uh, you're going to see that that red blood cell, we blow that up into uh, these uh, biphospholipids uh, that I've drawn for you that have the sphere, which is the part of the molecule that uh, is on the outside of the cell. But then those kind of tails <laughs> is the fatty part. The sphere is the water-loving part. But the tails or the legs of these little characters is the fatty part that um, comes from the different types of food that you eat, as well as what your chemistry is doing on the inside of your system. So that sounds a little complicated. Don't run away. We're going to break this down. So let's take a closer look. We're going to start with the devil, and he was not picked by accident. Uh, we're going to look at closer at what happens when you eat pig products or animal products. We're going to look at those avocados. We're going to look at fish, uh, and we're going to look at carbohydrates. That's what that uh, little smiley face is there, is, is a sucker a full of sugar. We're going to study some eggs, and we're going to use these as uh, representations of different types of fat that you can find in your red blood cells, that if you uh, watch to see, Doc, I've been on the ketogenic diet for six months, how is my cholesterol? And as we get a flash of a cholesterol panel done, it does not answer the question of, is that cholesterol predicting heart disease or what I like to think of as stiff uh, cell linings. We're going to talk about that before we get done too. Uh, those stiff cell linings are going to be a predictor of broken brains, broken um, or stiff blood vessels, uh, broken skin cells, broken uh, hormone cells. Uh, and as you watch to see what these fats do in circulation, uh, it does start with what are you eating and what else is your body doing while you eat. All right, so let's get started. We're going to unpack this because it probably sounds confusing, but if you've been around the channel long enough, you know we're going to break this down. So step one, we're just going to name these. Uh, the devil <laughs> is called the trans fats. We're going to use sugar as our saturated fats, and we'll explain that in just a minute. We've got our avocado seed that is a monounsaturated fat, and we've got our omega-3 uh, and omega-6s, which are part of our um, polyunsaturated fats. Again, uh, the saturated fats are divided into two parts, a MUFA, which are our monounsaturated fats, and PUFA. We're going we're gonna to break that down for you. As you look at the monounsaturated fatty acids and the polyunsaturated fatty acids, I just want you to remember that those are all under the banner of your unsaturated fats. And these are chemistry words, but they get translated into the world and into labels. And unfortunately, because that conversation has a rift in what the label is saying and what the body's chemistry is doing, uh, people have uh, take away the wrong messages before um, they, and then make decisions based on, based on the wrong assumptions. So, all right, let's begin with looking at um, saturated fats. So again, saturated fat, uh, I use uh, the representation here of a sucker a sucker made from sugar, and that is because when you see the word saturated fats, if you look, where did it come from? Saturated fats within our body uh, are made by our body, and we consume them, but they are not the same thing. 
So let me try that again. When your body uh, ha your body has this list of fats that we just went through, some of them your body cannot make. And other ones your body can make. Saturated fats are part of the uh, fat profile that your system can make. And where do the carbon units, where do, where do these uh, sources of energy, otherwise called food, where does it come from? Very highly linked to a high sugar or high carbohydrate diet. When you want to see who has the highest number of saturated fats in their body, in their red blood cells, you look for how high is their carbon from, how high is their consumption from sugar, from carbohydrates. So let's just take a close. I want you to look carefully at that uh, little red blood cell and you can see those little twinkles go along. Those are all the little lipids that are made from saturated fats. That if we would break down that cell and we would look at it under our machines that separate out which fats are unsaturated, which ones are fat saturated, which ones are trans fats. The saturated fats have an origin highly linked to the foods that are high in carbohydrates. And this is a huge misconception to the labels you read uh, saying this product is high in saturated fats. Um, You'll see that when you try to make a red blood cell, if you're inside the deep parts of your bone marrow where you're making red blood cells, white blood cells, and some platelets, it's going to use the fats that have come in through the body and been processed to build this uh, outside layer or this skin of your red blood cells. As that red blood cell processes, uh, you will uh, see a one of each of these little four-ish options uh, come into play for making your skin of your red blood cell. Okay, let's keep going here. We're going to talk about unsaturated fats. These are also called monounsaturated fats. If you get into the geek side of fats, you can see them called MUFAs. But most importantly, I hear keto people saying, I just eat the healthy fats. I eat avocados. I don't have steak. I don't have uh, pork chops. I don't have bacon. I just eat things like olives and avocados. And I'm like, that's going to not play forward very well. Uh, first of all, monounsaturated fats uh, are not one of the essential fats. Uh, there, there are... Um, um, there are essential, an essential fat means that your body can't make it. Your body can only get it through food. And monounsaturated fats actually can be made by your body. You can consume them. That's why I have an avocado here. I actually started with an olive, but nobody recognized it as an olive. So an avocado or an olive are very, they have a great marketing team that everybody says, oh, these are the healthy fats. This is that... Um, Mediterranean diet that is high in seed oils that are from avocados or uh, olive oil. And indeed, those fats are um, on the spectrum of good versus bad. They stay on the good side, but you can make them. When you look at these, um, you're going to see our little twinkles of avocado or monounsaturated fats uh, twinkle across that skin lining for the red blood cell. And some of those fats came from what you ate. But others, your body said, hey, we need some monounsaturated fats and we're going to make it. It is not essential. You can live without them. All right, so let's keep going here because this does get better. So here was our inside our bone marrow. We had our, our uh, saturated fats, which could come from pigs or cows or bacon, but they often are associated with high sugar. And that was our first layer of our red blood cells. And next we added in our monounsaturated fats, which are from healthy things like avocados and olives. So here we have two of them populating the insides of those red blood cells. And we're back to our drawing board here saying, all right, we've covered um, saturated. Uh, we are now going to go to the unsaturated fats.